In this session, we are going to focus on uh, the research introduction, the common mistakes that we do, and sometimes things that we do not understand that should go in the research introduction. Now, one of the most common mistake is that just mentioning the recommendations from existing research is not enough. What we normally do is we just mention that Mr. So and so or so and so researcher asked to include these variables. Well, that is definitely not enough. There is much more needed to be done in order to have a more captivating introduction. Now, what are those things that one should include in a research introduction? So, the scholars must explain the need for research. Just mentioning that a particular scholar has asked to include these variables or this research must be conducted is not enough. You have to explain the need for research. You have to explain the why aspect. Now, here are two papers that I have selected as an example to, as to how to explain the need for research. So, let's look at these papers. Now, here is this paper, Interpreting the Impact of Knowledge Management Processes on Organizational Performance in Chinese Higher Education, Mediating Role of Knowledge Worker Productivity. Now, here is the need for research. Why do you want to conduct this research? So, this is how you can explain the need for research. One of the most important facilitating factors is leadership behavior. Now, why you are including those variables? Why a particular construct is part of this research? Or why this particular construct must be studied? Although people might have recommended that, okay, this particular leadership behavior must be studied or this particular construct must be studied, you have to explain the why aspect. So I'm just going to quickly go through a few sentences here. One of the most important facilitating factors is leadership behavior as leaders have significant effects on directing and efficiency of knowledge management in their organizations. Leaders act as a catalyst for knowledge management processes. Now, all this is explaining the need to study leadership. The reason why leadership is important for knowledge management. Again, researchers have called for empirical investigation of KOL as a facilitator to KM processes. Now, these researchers have called for inclusion of KOL. Now, again, the limitations of existing research. Simply, existing research has called for attention to KWP. Now, existing research has called for attention to KWP. But why? KWP has an undeniable significance in knowledge-intensive organization. Now, this is why this particular construct must be studied. So, apart from just mentioning the limitation of existing research, you have to mention the importance of the constructs as well. Another example. In particular, internal marketing is recognized as an important enabler for enhancing KM processes in higher education institutions. It facilitates KM by offering an exclusive prospect for management to cooperate with personnel through taking initiatives. So yes, you have mentioned that internal marketing is important. Yes, you have mentioned that internal marketing has got very limited research when it comes to its relationship with knowledge management. But then you have to explain why studying internal marketing is important. So, one has to explain the need to study that particular construct. So, this is step one or the first bit that needs to be added to the introduction. That you have to explain the need for research. Secondly, if you are doing cross-discipline research, explain why it is important. For example, you are taking a construct that has primarily been studied in business organizations. And now you are studying it in higher education or maybe health sector or maybe any other sector. Then you have to explain why this particular construct is important for that particular sector. A few examples. Now in this paper, what we did was that we focused on servant leadership in higher education. So rather than just mentioning that, okay, servant leadership is important, servant leadership needs to be studied, there are multiple gaps related to servant leadership, we also explained why servant leadership is important in higher education. Now here is the example. 
Research on sovereign leadership has primarily focused on business organizations with relatively scarce research in context of higher education. Higher education institutions are faced with increased complexity, scarcity of resources and fierce competition for ranking and prestige. So leadership in educational institutions is massively challenging as leaders are faced with tough decisions pertinently to budgetary cuts, freezing pay rises or programs elimination. So leadership is important. And again, followed by this, there is there is other text as well. So servant leadership has significant utility in higher educational institutions, where primary function is provision of service to develop people. This can make servant leadership increasingly relevant in higher education. So just mentioning that there is very limited research on servant leadership in education, you have to mention and explain why servant leadership is important in higher education. So this is the second uh, important point that if you are doing cross-discipline research, explain why it is important to use that particular construct in the other sector or other discipline, just the way we did in this research. Moving on, another example, here is this paper. Fueling Knowledge Management Processes in Chinese Higher Education Institutes The Neglected Mediating Role of Knowledge Worker Satisfaction So first, in spite of the presence of significant indication of role of KM in existing literature, inadequate research studies have verified facilitating association of factors towards active enactment of KM in HEIs. So yes, there is limited research. So why there is a need to study? Again, regardless of increased status KM in HEIs, due to difficulty and enormous presence of knowledge in intensive possessions, KM policies implemented by HEIs are either insufficient or unpredictable, with need to further study factors that contribute to enhanced KM, specifically in, 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 in emerging economies such as China. Again. Second, existing research found that KM generates an increased knowledge worker satisfaction within firms that could enable organizations to, it, in, to attain enhanced performance. Knowledge worker satisfaction has an undeniable significance in knowledge intensive organization. However, present literature has rarely discussed its role in enhancing organizational performance. So rather than just mentioning the gap, you have to explain the need to study those variables as well. So all these points are actually directing us towards one thing. Do not just mention the limitations, mention the need to study as well. So next is if the relationships have been studied before, how have they been studied? Any contradiction? Results from the past studies must be studied for contradiction. If there is contradiction, if so, present them. If not, what is the limitation of research when relationship was tested previously? So if there are certain relationships that have been tested previously, are there any contradictions? If there are no contradictions, what are the limitations? Now moving on with a few examples. Here is one example that is a paper from Okay, servant leadership, career and life satisfaction, it's a cross-country study and here is our example. Now existing research has called for further research into both career and life satisfaction. So this is the limitation of existing research. And despite the progress in the career satisfaction literature, the research is significantly li limited and requires further exploration. So if we are saying that it is limited, we have to give a few examples of the limitations as well. Okay, what studies have been done before? And the findings suggested that the total effect of servant leadership on life satisfaction is null due to competitive mediation. So existing research has shown some contradictions. And they have asked for further assessment of mediating role. Additionally, life satisfaction research is criticized due to its lack of focus on work domain organizational settings. Additionally, the literature to life satisfaction is relatively new and has been flourishing rapidly. 
and there is little research into life satisfaction in higher education that too in context of student so what the authors have done here is they have mentioned and explained the limitations of existing research they have created a story related to the variables that have been included in their research and rather than just mentioning one particular reference okay they have called for further research they have explained the need from variety of aspects they have mentioned that there is there are issues with the results from existing research so you cannot be like there there you cannot say that it is conclusive secondly there is limited research and that too has focused more on organizational settings rather than on education and academics so explain your gaps in more detail another example so this is more related to the contradictions in existing research the empirical research revealed inconclusive findings regarding the impact of csr practices on organizational performance now how do we we say that okay these are inconclusive you have to give your evidence for instance the relationship between csr and op has been found to be positive in some studies others have suggested re rejection or disassociation so there is a clear contradiction and furthermore some scholars have questioned the approach used by mainstream research so what who are those some scholars here are those some scholars they argued that the direct relationship between csr and organizational performance cannot be 100% or it cannot be 100% reliable to say that there is a direct association it must be or it may be influenced by other factors so here comes the role of mediators so when you've got mediators in your study you can argue that the relationship is not direct and then explain the need to study the mediators within the introduction another example and this paper is on knowledge oriented leadership entrepreneurial orientation and knowledge management processes first much attention in the entrepreneurship literature has been on organizational performance however very few studies assess the relationship between entrepreneurship and project success now martis and others assess the impact of entrepreneurial orientation on project management maturity and found a positive relationship more recently martins and others 2018 in the first attempt to ascertain the direct impact of eo that is entrepreneurial orientation on ps found a significant relationship so what has been done in existing research what are its its limitations do not just mention the uh, recommendation by existing research explain your gaps in much more detail another one third akm processes in particular knowledge sharing has captured a greater part of scholarly attention so this one particular aspect has been too much focus or has been in too much focus of the research scholars so your research study how is it different explain your differentiation from existing research and finally the last thing and one of the most important things theoretical gaps has the previous research primarily focused on one or two theories pertinent to the concept can and can another theory be utilized with this concept this is very important this is how you contribute to the theory and how you report it or how do you write it within the introduction here is an example additionally the social exchange theory uh, which is based on the norms of reciprocity is the prominent theoretical lens that has been frequently invoked in extant literature or research to examine the relationship between servant leadership and employees behavioral and attitudinal outcomes and to explain the underlying mechanism such, such as leader member exchange so primarily the existing research has used social exchange theory to explain its relationships however based on the conservation of resource theory we argue that developing an exchange relationship between leaders and followers is not only the panache to stimulate employees innovative behavior because the employees also require certain psychological resources now previously the research has primarily used social exchange theory in this research we focused on another theory or another theory to explain the relationship of leadership with employee related outcomes now this is how you are going to use 
a different theory or this is how you are going to write your introduction you have to focus on these bits and pieces because just mentioning the recommendation from existing research is not enough you have to focus on the need for research you have to focus on why it is important if it's a cross discipline research you have to explain what relationships have been studied before are there any contradiction if there are no contradiction why should these relationship be be studied and finally you have to focus on the theory as well so if you've got these things in your introduction this will help you strengthen your introduction and your research as well thank you very much